Hi everyone, welcome to yet another very interesting episode of Reels with Seal. Today I have a, a very amazing guest. Um, in fact, a couple of months back when I thought to reach out to her, I felt that uh, maybe it was too early to have this conversation. But as you know, God will have it. I saw her and I mentioned to her and she said, oh, it's okay, whenever you're ready. And then when I thought again to actually send out the letter, something came and said, I think you might be rushing her, allow her, but somehow she reached out to me the next week and um, I thought to say, okay, are you ready? And she said, she's ready. And here we are today um, about to start up this really interesting conversation that I know would you know, impact you and impact me as well. I have looked up to her with so much admiration on how she has been able to carry on despite you know, the challenges that she has faced in recent times. So please join me as I welcome Ambassador Dr. Mrs. Wiyime Ivy King. She is a woman of many parts and diversities with a wealth of experience that spans several fields. She is first of all, a passionate God lover and an anointed scribe who sees her writing as an important calling and ministry which enables her function as an influencer and change agent in the society. A co-founder and builder with her late husband, Dr. Ubon King, whom she was married to for 18 years until his transition to glory in December 2020. Ambassador Ivy King stepped in as the chairman of Protection Plus Services Limited, a private security and maritime company where she has taken up the mantle and leadership challenge to both continue and build on his worthy legacy. She is also a co-founder of the Ubon King Foundation, whose flagship event, Tinkation, is a measure of thinking and education, hosts an annual youth entrepreneur conference in Nigeria, geared at challenging the minds of young people and winning them from a dependency to a productive mindset. An author and publisher, she is a conference speaker, duly certified marriage mentor and relationship coach child protection specialist, certified grief and loss counselor, and a mental health addictions therapist from the Institute for Marriage and Family Affairs, USC. She also has a certification in women leadership from the Plan Institute, USA. Ambassador Ivy King is a graduate of English from the University of Uyo. Ambassador Dr. Uyemi Ivy King was recently awarded a degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Leadership and Strategic Management by the SK University, Benin Republic. She's a founder and executive director for her foundation and many others through which she mentors young girls and women and helps them develop leadership and entrepreneurial skills. Dr. Ivy King is a mother of four and with her active social media profiles, she continues to impact by her writings. Please join me as I welcome on today's episode of CEO's Reels. Dr. Mrs. Ivy King, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. happy to be here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to chat with you today. So how are you feeling today, ma'am? I feel good. I want to <laughs> yeah. feel good. You look yeah. good. Thank I'm, you. I'm really glad you know, yeah. to see you all yeah. you know, energized. Thank um, you. The death of a husband um, is generally recognized as a very devastating you know, um, event and ranked worldwide as one of the most stressful losses. And I can't begin to imagine, you know, uh, all the challenges that you've had to face, you know, and, you know, dealing with it, now playing the role of father and mother, and then of course, um, continuing his legacy is, is quite a lot to deal with, but Looks this like grace. God has been there with you. <laughs> yeah, all the way. He could has. have been worse, but God he has been faithful. Have. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. So, yeah. um, we're going to have an interesting conversation today. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I really yeah. cannot wait. Mm -hmm. So, um, I knew Dr. Um, Ubon King. Yeah. I knew him very well. He was one of the first friends that my husband introduced me 
to while we were cutting. So. And um, because their office was in VI and mine was in VI, and yeah. Adeo Malakija, during the break time, sometimes it would just pop up. Babe, where are you? <laughs> that was, special Oga. Yeah, I'm, I'm that was him for you. Yes, I'm yeah. upstairs. You say, come mm -hmm. down, come down. Yeah. And I did downstairs. And I'll come and we'll chat. And when that guy was giving me small, small issues then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the whole thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I say, see your friend though. He's stressing me. I say, no, no worry. Mm -hmm. If they don't grieve, we grieve for our I don't, we don't sign out. Settles. Settles. Yeah, that was he if used to say. Agree, we agree for us. That's what he used and, to say. You know, he was so special to me. In fact, one, at one time I felt like, you know, we had grown very apart because we went on to, you know, um, start the real estate yeah, business. Real estate, yeah. We were involved. So I remember when we started. Yes. Yeah. We yes. went together to see your husband yes. at the Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, he left Excel also and then mm. went full into um, the securities business. Yeah. And, you know, everybody growing, mm. you know, trying to keep it together. Yeah. And then he was my one of my first customers yeah. after my husband. My husband was my first customer. Yeah. So <laughs> when I count my first 10 customers mm. in Laundry King, you know, he was one of them. He yes. was so he, loyal to that was extremely <laughs> loyal. <laughs> yeah. He was, I don't, a lot of people didn't know we were that close because mm. it's when we see yeah. and when I call yeah. him on the phone, we'll chat mm. like, you know, so one day I just guilt tripped him a lot. I mm. said, ah, my guy, you are blown now. You, you are banned. <laughs> you are like blown. Your <laughs> my special or guy you are blown yeah. now you've abandoned that your small girl mm. you know you don't look for me you don't call mm. me this is, and i said uh, okay what well, well in fact you I didn't know you had just set uh, yourself up i set him, <laughs> <laughs> I set him yeah. up yeah. and next thing he said he will send me a cow and true mm. to his word he yeah. sent me a that cow was, that was the wrong thing uh, for you. and you yeah. know that blew my mind i was so happy uh Honestly, his, his demise came as a huge shock. At that time, we were in Dubai. Mm. I didn't know how to act that day. Mm. It imagine. was it was just a lot. Yeah. And I don't know whether people feel the same way. I don't know how to console people who are grieving. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I came, When I came to see you, I yeah. told you, I don't know yeah. what to say. I wouldn't, there's really no... What do you say? There's no clay cut process no, true, to it. True. Yeah. So, the main yeah, fact that you're there, there is, is, is more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. I knew him. Mm. at least for a, a bit. Mm. I want you to tell our audience who is or who was Ubon King? <laughs> how, how do you even start you know, to talk about somebody like Ubon King? Because honestly, even though he was my husband and we really do go back, way, way back, we're in the same church. At some point, he was chief protocol officer to a pastor then and I was chief protocol officer to the so pastor's wife. wife yeah. yeah, so we go way back mm. and um, it's a lot. I think that's where it started. That's where it started. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it started because oh, everything, wow. everything people saw of Ubon King much later in life, they're not new things to me mm. because I've discovered that you exhibit at a higher level what you wear at a lower level. Mm. So there was really, when, when people say he's a crazy giver, for instance, mm. he would he could give his last mm. and he would trek. True. So that was how he was. True. You know, Ubon King can give you the last 20 naira that he has and then trek home. And I used to tell him that um, because once he comes home and he has just done something like he has given somebody a very heavy gift, once he says, Babe, I love you, there's a way he says it that I know he has done <laughs> he it. Has, he has yeah, committed. That look, oh, this is what I've done. So I always get myself prepared. Uh, so over time, I got used to too. that. And I told him that, look, as long as you don't come home one day and tell me that you're yeah, sewing me and the children out, um. that it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you want. So anytime he just told me that this is what God is telling me, that I need to give this person this, I would not argue it. Mm. I would not argue it because over the years I've seen it work. You know how it is when somebody is telling you, God told me to do this thing and you're not seeing the result. Mm. You begin to think maybe it's a lie. Mm. I've seen him give his way out of really tough situations and he was an unconventional businessman in the yeah. sense that it was those times when cash flow was kind of tight right. that he would assemble the team and tell the team that look i need to touch god's eye and touching god's eyes i'm going to look for somebody vulnerable who needs help to reach out and sow 
is seeding to the seed, and it wouldn't make sense to a lot of business people because mm -hmm. how would you tell me that there's no cash there's flow no and that is when you want to sow seeds? Sow seeds? But he did that all the time, and I always saw the situations turn. The day God spoke to him about giving out his car, then a Range Rover, his driver cried because the driver <laughs> didn't want to let go. go but in Obong King's mind, that car was gone. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if in giving out that car, he had an alternative. He was ready there to was go no buy it. That's the kind of person he was, you know. So the Obong King that I have known as the husband he was not just my husband he was my friend because a lot of times people look at the um the titles but beyond the title of husband and wife there's a relationship that should be happening so he was my friend and um, we intentionally built our relationship in fact we did it in such a way that we said Every Friday, as long as both of us are in town, we yes, go out I on dates. Yes, and the I children got the so used to it. So mm. once they see us leave, sometimes mm. we won't pack anything, mm. and we may not even come back. Come back. So on Friday, the children just knew that look, mm. these people are your, these people are your, <laughs> you know. So we said the children will marry, mm. they will leave us. Yes. So that we needed to work on the relationship because a lot of couples, you know, the the because the children are now involved. They focus on their children and they forget their relationship. Yes. So we built that relationship intentionally. And I will not call it unfortunate because the Bible says that our lives and our times are in God's hands. Because True. we have videos where we used to say that two of us will grow old together oh. with all our teeth gone on mm. one pillow and all that stuff. But I, I couldn't have seen the future. Mm. But I even tell people now that even if God has shown me that future, with the kind of marital experience that, that you've had. God gave me with him, hmm. that I will still choose him over and over again, knowing hmm. that, okay, at this point, he's going to exist. I will still make the same decision. Hmm. Because he lived out the qualities of a husband. And Ubon King was somebody who did not just do the motivational speaking outside. You know, a lot of men present a front outside. Hmm. And they want people, they create a persona that they want people to, to see, identify with, which is not real. Hmm. But Ubon King was authentic in and out. And that is even one of the things that made me decide to marry him. Because at the point when I said yes to him, like he would say that, he didn't even have up to two trousers to his name. <laughs> that he had washed the one trouser to the I think he color. was squatting. He told me <laughs> yeah, the story. Yeah, we squatted. Yes. And when we were even squatting, we were so... We were sleeping on the floor in somebody's house when yes, we really got married. Yes, he told me. And we would be laughing and gisting to the point that the person had to ask, what are you always laughing about? Talking about. about. Because you know how it is. You're a young lady, you have your aspirations, and here you are married to a guy that... He can't even afford to rent a house at that point and you are you are laughing over what <laughs> what's what is what funny are, what's in funny life about at this point yeah. yes but i've always been this sort of woman that regardless of the situation and he too was like that we make do with what the situation is deal with it don't and focus as on we can afford what you don't have. we aspire mm. you know it's not like you're settling to say okay mm. things will never change of mm. course you expect things to change but as the situation is, deal with it at that level. So I didn't allow anything to depress me or maybe push him to the point that see what other men are providing for their wives. You must give me this, you must give me that. Because like I told him, I remember when he proposed, I said something to him. I wrote him a letter. In fact, I will search for that letter because mm. I have all the letters we exchanged. Oh, wow. Even the small, small notes he was passing to me in church. <laughs> then I still have you? them. Yeah. The day I showed them to him, he was shocked, you know. And I said something to him. I said, look, I don't want any gifts from you. There's nothing you're going to give me that I cannot work for myself. I used to have those very wild advocacy ideas. In fact, when I said yes, a lot of people went to him from church. I said, how did you get this girl to say yes? She's tough, she's this, she's that. And we had to have a conversation. Are you sure you know what marriage is? He wasn't sure if I understood the concept mm, of, marriage of marriage and everything. What you were getting yeah. into. <laughs> you know? So when I wrote that letter to him, I said, I don't want your gift. But that's how we got married. I said, oh, yeah, bring all the gifts. I'll collect it now. <laughs> so we used to laugh about it. Yeah, we used to laugh about it. Uh. So Bon King was that kind of person. And he said he had made, said a prayer to God that if there is anybody in this life who ever needs help bring the person my way and as long as it's my power to help i would 
because of his background, mm. because of how he grew up, because of the pain of mm. his past. Mm. So he didn't want to see anybody in Suffer. pain. Mm. There were radical decisions that he took that some people would not understand it. But as his wife understood where he was coming from, mm. absolutely. Mm. Like one time, he just drove out of the house. By the time he came back, 900,000 had gone. What happened? He said that as he was driving out of our estate, he saw a widow with her son. So he gave them a lift to the gate because from my house to the gate is quite a distance. Mm. And along the way, they, were they told him the issues. A man who had died, she couldn't afford school fees for the children. Mm. And before he came back home, 900 had left his account. Mm. And in fact, when he passed, her daughter reached out to me from Ghana. I didn't even know. She said, Madam, I'm able to go to school today in Canada because of your husband. That any time I come to Nigeria, I must make sure I come and look for you. Mm. So that's the kind of person that Obama King was. That that's was the kind experience. of legacy he left. Yeah, that kind of legacy. Amazing. Because yeah. if I, I can talk about it for money, I know. To life, I know. Trust you me, have I to know. cut it short. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, yeah. so we have um, introduced a bit who Obama King was. Tell us who Ivy Kings is. Okay, we mm. may Ivy King. Um, I, I'm a mother of four and. Um, I, that doesn't really identify me. I, I understand that I'm created with purpose because I've always been someone who had this. Um, I love to write, and I remember when we were growing up, I had set up like a drama and debating society in the estate we lived in in Calabar at that time. And my father, who was he was in the civil service, but he was he was a very cerebral person mm. you know the way we, we were raised he mm. raised us in such a way that we would have healthy debates with him and he shaped me he shaped me in a way that i don't know how to lick people's boots mm. you know because there are some people that they come around you they mm. don't really like you yes. but they are trying to you know pretend like they do because they yes. need something yes. from you i'm not Absolutely. that kind of person mm. So we had those, he permitted us to have debates with him if we don't agree with him. And if you bring up a we superior argument, service. yeah, if you bring up a superior argument, my him. father will listen, even if you're his child. Mm. So that's the kind of background I'll that I have. So it, it's really helped me as an adult, you know. It's even from my husband who, you, you know, <laughs> at some point we'll have these conversations, they will say you're too troublesome. And <laughs> once something is upsetting me, I cannot, you will know that that thing has upset yes. me. And you say you can't even, you can't do can't politics. So, because, <laughs> so it's something that I have to learn, you know, that it's not everything you react to. Too. Because once I'm upset, you will know. Mm. You know. So it, it's helped me even with my relationships with people. Mm. You, Anybody who is in a relationship with me, you know where you stand with me mm. at any point in, in time. time. Mm. And my background is communications and media. So I've, 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 the, the last place I, I worked with, was that um, TW magazine okay. with Mrs. Adesua, you know, where I was mm. staff writer and I was with her until that was the early days and then mm. my husband had spoken to me about starting the business. Okay. So and at that point in time I was pregnant with with I think that was our third child. child okay. Yeah. So he wanted me to come out so that we could build this together. together. So that was the point at which I stopped with TW magazine and then I said this is ours this is a legacy we want to build mm. and I know his heartbeat I know also because you know a lot of times people think that when you're married to the man your own dreams should disappear mm -mm. you know you should oh it's all about his legacy because I keep hearing thank you for building his legacy and all of that and for me I, the, the legacy is our legacy because we are sat down together my communication with Ubon King was top notch that's one of the things that we really had going for us. There's nothing we would we could not talk about. No subject was taboo, you know. So, and he had expressed himself to me the vision he had in mind, and he also saw where my own heartbeat was. So, in that vision, we had to merge. We had to find a common ground. So, while pure security was his forty, he was a, a pure security professional. I was a media and communications person. So within the business, we, they were subsidiaries and I was in charge of the, the printing and publishing, the media That's branding right. part of yeah. the business. And then I worked more with him at Obon King Foundation. Okay. And then of course I had Save Our Women and Girls mm -hmm. Foundation. 
So that we're building it together. Okay. So it, it didn't seem like rocket science that is not here again and um, it should end. I had to continue it. So there, there, there was no question of, oh, his legacy, thank you. I, 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 when people thank me for it, I feel somehow mm. that this is something that we built together. Mm. He, it was his, it was mine. Mm. You understand? Mm. And because for couples, they, there's this tendency, his money, her money. You even hear when is the man bringing the money and there's a situation in the house, it's, it's, it's our money. <laughs> When it is the woman bringing the money, it's her money. It is very common <laughs> you know? in our yeah, society. Yeah, it's very common. So but, I'll, I'll take you through, yeah. um, you know, um, this particular subject matter. Okay. It's very interesting because yeah. um, a lot of families, mm. a lot of couples don't think it's a good idea mm. to work together. Yeah. A few of them are waking up to that you know, reality yes that when your vision align i feel mm. then it makes life it makes easier if you easier, can share yeah. your bed why can't you share your money so mm. um how was it you know working with your husband mm. what were your experiences mm. you know did you at any point in time feel like he was um he was um shadowing you but he was covering you mm. and taking all the shine and mm. you were not able to <laughs> yeah. you were not able to live and express your dreams mm. you know your own vision was kind of um hidden <laughs> you know and that's then a very why, good question why, yeah. why is it a problem mm. why mm. is it such a big deal for mm. couples to work together yeah. okay you know i have an interesting philosophy about life which helps me to deal with some of these things that seem as if it's a problem I understand that two people cannot have the same temperament. You have the quiet temperament, you have the outgoing temperament. It doesn't make one better than the other. It's just different. And Ubon King was the more outgoing part of us. Because first of all, this thing is a, is a, is a covenant relationship. It's not, it's not, marriage is not a contract. Marriage is a covenant relationship. And if you can share your bodies together, you can share everything together then how much more a business that you're building together? You, you understand? If you have pledged your life to yes. each other. Yes. So what else is there? So Ubon King was a more outgoing part of us. And I was, my temperament, I'm a bit more, my temperament is more quiet. And I didn't see... A bit more reserved. It's a bit more reserved. Mm. I'm not like him. Like if you go into an environment now, you Ubon know King him. will be, all, before you the know him, he has <laughs> acquainted himself with everybody in that environment. And for me, I would rather watch. I'll step back and watch first. I want mm -hmm. to study people and then I'll now begin to pick who do I want to relate with. So that's how it was. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there's always a middle ground. Two people mm -hmm. cannot be loud. If not, mm -hmm. be, they'll be wahala. And mm -hmm. funny enough, at home, we've had this debate for the longest time because we kept asking the children, come and judge. Between me and mommy, who is more talkative? And the children, all of them, Without any question, they'll say, Mommy. Uh -uh. Ironically. So, in the house, I'm the, the active, the, one. <laughs> active one. And it's a bit more quiet. I, I think, I home. think, not, without any rocket <laughs> yeah. science, mm. it, it will be like that because you spend mm. more time with the children. Yeah. So, that's why they, you know, um, yeah. argue, exactly. argue, yes. it, it so I So, I didn't feel in any way overshadowed. Because this is a, something, a legacy we're building together. Amazing. In a legacy, it's just like when an army goes out to battle. You have the front-facing people yes. that are in the front of the battle. You yes. have the people at the rear and yes. the flanks and all of that. Yes. Their position. Yes. So does it take away from the fact the that they're fighting oh. in this battle or something? So it wasn't an issue for me. And I mm. gave him all the support. And he gave me all the support. You because needed. if there was something that I needed to do, in my own um the foundation i was trying to build that time mm. he would push me to the end and obon king foundation both of us we, we you found that working yes, together yes you know you so i together. didn't in any way feel overshadowed like i would always say that what obon king says in his video mrs king writes you know mm. so we complimented each other like mm. that there was no competition Nothing. And you know, if amazing, yeah, I'm not sure if you heard that. <laughs> what Ubon King says on his videos, mm. Mrs. King wrote them. 
So if people don't know, mm. they cannot... They even sometimes I'll do research and I'll find out something. I'll tell you, see this thing is quite interesting. Have you seen this? Mm. And you look at it, and this is king. By the end, you go and <laughs> make it into yeah, a video. A video and yes. do it. Mm. So we work seamlessly like that. Mm. No competition, nothing. Amazing. And if he hadn't um, involved me the way he did in his business, ensured that... I knew because private maritime security, which was his forty, was not my own. Yes, yes. Left to me, <laughs> it's not something that, you that would I would want to handle. But because we are in this covenant relationship together, mm -hmm. we have to find a point of alignment with our vision, with our aspirations. Yeah. He didn't see me as his um, assistant or yes, his as second, an accessory, an yes. necessary accessory to mm. what he was or doing. Second he saw me, command. Yes, he saw me as part of what he was building amazing and he reflected in the structure that he set up so when he passed there wasn't even a question of okay oh, who is going to step in now everybody in the system naturally knew because he was somebody who would make tell you if you anybody who cared to listen that his wife contributes to 90 percent of my success he has those videos out there and he wasn't saying that to make anybody happy he was saying that because that was the truth mm -hmm. so that has also helped me because the, the worst thing any man can do, even if you're not in the same career, let's say the man has his own business and maybe you're working somewhere else, but you must always find a point where two of you are sharing, rubbing minds together, you understand what the other person is doing. Because anything can happen, nobody prays for... For eventualities. For, no. Yes. I didn't even see this happening to me in the next million years when we do those videos and say that we want to grow old on one pillow. I didn't see that happening to me. But because of the foundations that we had set, that transition was very easy for me. Amazing. It would have been tough otherwise. Because mm -hmm. let's face it, your wife is the one person that would have your back if your relationship is I okay. I say that to Dr. Yes. Ned every day. <laughs> if you're watching, yeah. hear it again. Yeah. So the greatest security any man can give his family is for him to Empowering ensure that his wife, his wife is empowered Amazing. and is involved in his business. Amazing. Because once you're not here, believe me, the hawks will show <laughs> Whether you like it or not, they, even the people that you felt, oh, these ones will die for this man, hmm. they will turn into, into terrorists hmm. in a way that you will not believe. Wow. And if the man did not empower you with information, he did not set a structure that protects you and the children, hmm. then you're yeah, you leaving messy. you for the wolves. Yeah. And that's where a lot of women have found themselves. So, you know, the man dies, and before you know it, if he had a thriving business, they're out on the streets with their children. Hmm. So men need to think about it because you're not. If, okay, let's even say you are angry with your wife that okay, this woman, if I die now, she'll go and marry another man and take everything with one. Your children are there. How about the children? That you only got it. Mm -hmm. So you punish your children as well because you want to prove something, or maybe even prove something to your family. That okay, let me show my family that this woman is not the one controlling me. That's the greatest mistake any man can make. Mm. And it makes it also easy for a lot of women to walk away. Because mm. I've spoken to women who lost their husband and who said to me, Look, why am I even going to kill myself over anything he had? I'll walk away. You know, it makes it easy. Mm. But for a husband like Obon King, there's no walking away hmm. from what we started together. Hmm. It, it may not be here, hmm. but like I keep saying, he left Mrs. King here. Yes. He left his children he left here. Mrs. King so it will be his hands extended, will, everything he would have wanted will push it as hmm. much as we can, God helping us. Amazing. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. You walked more behind the scenes, like, you know, you have um, rightly stated here, with the troublemaker himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how does it feel like, you know, feeling in, into his shoes, sitting at the forefront of everything, from being a mom, a dad, mm -hmm. you know, to sitting as the chairman of mm -hmm. Protection Plus Limited today? Yeah. How does it feel, you know, wearing all these mm -hmm. many hats and double roles? I must say, because I don't like to do superwoman, it's not been an easy thing for me. Hmm. It's, it's not been easy, but it's been a challenge that I've told myself I have to take up this challenge. Because there's no way I'm going to allow myself sink into depression, sink into a pity party. In fact, when he passed, the first few days when I came up on my social media, I wrote something. I said, I don't want a pity party. If you're going to come into my space and start making me feel 
like oh you start laughing come and break and down and, and start like, crying and, please don't come cry first and then you come and meet me oh wow because i needed to protect my mental health yeah. and energy at and that, that time and that and of my children, children too mm. i needed to be strong for the children you understand and but at, at that i wasn't putting up a front where the children felt oh this mom is not feeling it they knew i was feeling it. in fact my son and her, his sisters were very worried for me because they kept my son said something to me he said mom the kind of relationship that you and daddy had i used to tell my friends in school that you and daddy were best friends and some of them could not understand they would ask me how can a mother and a father be, be best, best friends. friends so the children were the ones who were over worried for me because they would come they would see us just sing together laughing when people say that our relationship was close and all of that you and they just saw a tip of the iceberg outside mm. because the main thing was at home mm. happening in the house we were having a wonderful experience at home mm. so that got the children really worried that how is she going to handle oh. this thing my first daughter the day they broke the news i broke the news to them she knelt down and she begged me she said mommy please be strong for us we oh. are going to I'll, i personally promise you mm. that we are going to go through because she was scared Wow. Even my mom was scared that wow. when she, my mom told me that when she heard the news, she told herself, I'm bearing two children because she did not see me surviving it. Why? Because of the kind of relationship so that we had. Hard. So that was her fear. That was the fear of the children and a lot of the people who knew us. So the way God pulled me in that season, the way God upheld me in that season, I know that for sure there is a God in heaven. And then I also had to now step fully into Protection Plus. Like I told you, I wasn't deeply involved, but I knew what was going on there. I've been a director from inception. The business started in our home. Even before the business started, I knew everything my husband carried. In fact, the first, one of the first people even told that he was leaving his, his um, former company, that God was asking him to start this business, was even my mom. And because there were no savings or anything, and my mom said there will be hunger in the land, though, mm. you know, just that God will see people mm, through true. and all of that, mm. you know. So, more or less, I've been there. around the business. There's really no term you come and throw at me that is like totally strange. I have an idea. So, I think that also gave me some sort of soft, soft landing. landing. So, I now had to start learning. It's a private maritime security business. So, I had to leverage on the people he had trained in the business to begin to understand more about the business and i think i'm still in that learning process and once you accept a challenge it, it doesn't look so daunting after all mm. so once you accept you rise up to this responsibility that look i may not really know it but i'm going to do everything i can to learn what i have to learn in order to be able to do it then it makes it a little bit easy so that's it on the business side. It's been a tough learning curve for me and I'm learning. But I think from when he first passed to where I am today, in terms of understanding the business, I would say that I've grown considerably and I'm still growing in it. Because I said, there's no way our legacy would go down. No. I, mind you, I didn't say about King's legacy. Our legacy. Yeah, I'm heard conscious you. about what I'm I saying. Heard yes. you, right. There's no way our legacy would go mm. down. And I, I, I want the business to be structured in such a way that if it cannot God calls leave you me home today, it will have to leave me. It's yes. not tied to IV mm. or it's not tied to bonking. You, you understand? Mm. And then the part of being a mother and a father, I keep saying that I'm a mother. I don't know how to be a father. Mm. Being mm. a mother is all I know how to be. Mm. And my husband played that role effectively. It was an effective You can't father. wear those shoes. Yeah, I cannot. So what I, I try to do is to intentionally surround the children with male figures. Thankfully, I have reliable brothers. My family is very close-knit, mm. you know, and they, they can fill that gap for me. And then intentionally surround them with male role models. You know, funny enough, as outgoing as Obon King was, everybody was knew a Ubon very King family every, man. Yes, Obon King had very few friends. Yes, and when I say people are shocked, mm. his friends were not plenty. Sure. And he ensured that I knew all the people that meant a lot to him. And in this season, those people are still behind the scenes, but they are mentoring my son, they are talking to the children, so they fill that gap for me. So I don't mm. have to start playing father mm. because every child needs a, a father figure, in their life. whether the father is present, present or, not. or not 
that child needs a, a male role model mm. and a woman can play that role mm. so you can only be a mother and do what you can as a mother what you can. yes but of course you know that we women we are like mother hens <laughs> there's no way you go and try to attack the cheek of a mother hen that the mother hen will not, not come rise. at you mm. exactly mm. Yeah. So, so um to delve in a little um, personal um can you tell us how you know you were able to walk through you know that that period how were you able to deal with it deal with the children mm. you know okay first of all when people talk of strength i serve a strong goal yes so i only lean on that strength mm. the time as i need it because i remember when he passed my pastor paul adepherson said something to me and he prayed a prayer for me that god will give you clarity of mind because there are so many decisions to be made hmm. in other words what he wasn't saying is that you can't afford to break down now so i needed to lean on god yes there will be times that i will feel overwhelmed and i'm not trying to paint a picture of somebody who didn't even break down or cry at all there were times that that happened but i didn't make that the central focus for me in fact like didn't i would say on it. yes the first few days hmm. few weeks for me was denial and that denial was necessary for me so that I could focus on the children mm. and ensure that the children are okay because the children were at very sensitive points in their lives. My my second daughter was going to become a teenager that mm. year, 13. My my oldest was going to be 18 and she was already preparing to leave for school in Canada. Mm. So I was even scared that she would be able to pass these exams. But I saw her put everything in mm. it because I told them that the greatest thank you you can give to your father is to ensure you do well yes this thing has hit us but we cannot allow it to define our lives mm. so we had a lot of conversations there were times we would come together as a family with the children we we'll talk about him we we'll remember funny things that used to happen and all of us maybe somebody will start crying and i'll tell them don't stop the person let the person cry mm. so the children understood that crying is not a sign of Weakness despair or anything pain, yeah. you just need to let it out mm. so i spent time communication was not only with Ubon king we had good communication as a family because when he was here every single day as long as both of us are around the children will come into our rooms we'll have conversations we'll read devotionals together and it's something that i still do so we we rallied around each other in fact by the time somebody reached out to me a lot of things happened this year somebody reached out to me on instagram who hadn't even met my husband before she was she's in the uk and i'll never forget it and by the time the conversation with her was ending she said i watch his videos i've been blessed by his videos i want you people to have grief counseling hmm. and i know what it means if you're going to pay for that session it's a lot and she got us professionals in the UK mm. for and all of us came on the call. Mm. And what they kept saying that what they can see is that we are very bonded as a family. And that's also what has really helped us. So it really a lot of the things that they were telling us were things that the children and I were already doing. So because when I we finished the session, I asked the children that how did you see it? What do you think? And they said, Mommy, a lot of these things you've told us already. You know so that also helped us through that initial period and then to say the next thing that i want to say i want to go back to 2020 during the lockdown mm. that lockdown i believe was divine god ordained that i'm lockdown. trying not to be teary <laughs> forgive me <laughs> yeah it's, it's, mm. it's okay like i told the children it's okay mm. to let it out yeah. because that lockdown afforded mm. us an op a time with my husband that i think yes We've spent time, we've done family holidays and things like that. But that lockdown was intense because bonding. it was at home throughout. It was a the bonding was time. on another level. In fact, we had so much going on. Every morning we have devotions together. We watch this, um, there's this um, channel, Alox. He will give us assignments. It was like the, it was, we're running like the an lecturer. Ad, yes. He will come, he will teach from the Bible. We used to call him that he's the prophet. Mm. Me, I was assistant prophet. Uh. So he will say, it's just that you people are not giving me prophets coffee. <laughs> I will make jokes. But we learned a Lord. lot in that season. Mm. We had church in that season like never before. We celebrated each other. Like In fact, from what was happening in my home, somebody from 700 Club reached out to me because I was posting videos. We will do maybe like a call, um, a, a, I mean, 
different things. Uh, there's a word that escaped me. And then we'll have karaoke, we'll have movie nights. We're coming up with all sorts that period. And I remember my sister saying to me, because I had over, in my home then, I had over 13 people or so. Oh, wow. They locked down. Mm. Because I had a cousin that had come from mm. home and he couldn't go back because of the lockdown. So he was there in mm. the house and all of that. My sister said that she doesn't want real church to start because what we're having, the church we're having in the home was so good that she didn't want real church to start. Mm. So that period provided an opportunity where we bonded as a family and even with my siblings. And it also gave on, you a lot of learning opportunities yes, too. Yes, on a level that we've not done before, before. You know, And he made sure that every child's birthday was specially celebrated. We we'll set up the house, we we'll turn the house into a movie, whatever. If the child wanted like an African thing, we we'll turn the house into an African themed um, setting. Mm. So every child was specially celebrated. We didn't know that something was coming ahead, mm. but I really bless God for that opportunity. So you can imagine as bonded as we were for this thing to happen from the blues mm. when we're not even expecting it. So when it happened, it was same year it happened. Yeah, same year, December yes, 26. Yeah. Mm. So when 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 he passed, you can imagine how it was always the life of the party. Mm. Ubon King cannot be in the room, and <laughs> you will not and know that Ubon no, King is there. It's not possible. So even at home, he will be given. He was. We divided ourselves into teams. Yes. Team A, Team B. I was in one team against my children. In the other team, we have competitions in their house, mm. you know. So all of a sudden for that person who was like the rallying point for all of mm. us to be it's taken removed. out was the toughest blow to face. In fact, the day we broke the news to the children is a day that I, I want if it's possible to erase from my memory forever. Mm. Because I, I first told my mates, I have my mates that have been with me, the one of them has been with me for over five years, she has become like an older sister to the children. So I called, I called the other person, I said, come, let's go outside. And I told me and my siblings, my plan was, okay, let me tell you, so you can help me to control the children. Yeah. When they, mm. I made the wrongest, because even the children were even more composed than, her, than they made. Because the way two of them reacted that night and screamed, mm. they shouted, they shouted, they rolled on the floor, and the children came running downstairs. So when they, the children ran down, you know, my sister was struggling with the door that she didn't want them to come out. My, they were, my children were pushing the door. My sister was struggling. Now we laugh about it. That day it was not funny. And they came out. So I had to face something that no woman should ever face. Because my plan was, okay, let me see how my mom can even come in so that I will have an older person with me. But I was forced. And moreover, the news was already online. I hear the thing trended. See, human beings, eh? It trended on mm. CNN. That mm. kind of exposure that mm. would have wanted for Bon King Foundation yes. that would have even helped a lot mm. that we didn't have. They gave it freely mm. when he passed. Mm. CNN Africa, they were so my friend. He was me, a troublemaker yes, and everybody honestly, knew him. Exactly Somehow, the thing just went viral. Just went viral. Just yes. went viral. And mm. people were giving all sorts of funny versions of the event that even mm. me I was wondering. Where did they get this information oh, that's, from? That's, you know? that's how the media So works. my friend just told me, look, Ivy, the way this story is spreading online, your children, you have teenagers, they if they go soon. online, they will soon hear. Mm. I think it's better you, you tell them, them this thing. So I had to, I was confronted with that. I had to tell them that night. My son just kept shouting, Mommy, I'm not ready. Mommy, no, because he, he had intense mentoring sessions with his dad that he mm. they never allowed me to be part of oh. they said his men stop just two of them he intentionally kept pouring into him mm. he was always having these sessions so he just kept saying mommy i'm not ready mommy i'm not ready my daughter ran to the road in, in front of the house in the estate and sat on the floor you know so but i thank god because since nobody in my house passed that night i keep telling people since nothing happened mm. to any of us that night and we slept through the horror of that first day. Every other thing is easy afterwards. My sister later on told me that when she went to the room to check on the children, because I, had to, I ran into my sister's room, I couldn't sleep in our room, you know. The children that she saw them holding hands, all of them, and they were praying that night. So she came and reported to me. So it calmed me down. Yes, I couldn't sleep that night and many nights after immediately. But over time, 
it got easier. Mm. And then my daughter, my second daughter now came to me and said, Mommy, since daddy passed, I've been having these dreams. I keep seeing him in my dreams and he will tell me, take care of my wife and everyone. I'm going for a meeting up there. He will be wearing white. She said, Mommy, it was the same dream happening every day. Mm. So she told me about it and I said, okay, fine. And then my youngest... How old was she? <laughs> she was, then she was, um, I think Atara was 12. Mm. Yeah, Atara was 12. And she remembers. And she remembers. No, Atara is the most outspoken one of all yes. of them. Yeah, mm. the children to have their gifts. Mm. And that is why we don't compare gifts in my house. I've made them understand their uniqueness. And you don't shut yes. them down. Yeah, don't shut them down. She's very expressive. Very. In fact, recently she talked to me. She said, Mommy, I'm not talking to you like your daughter. I'm talking to you like I advised. I also spoke to my dad. I'm advising you like I advised my dad. She said, God, love that man too much to make him suffer. You know? <laughs> I know. So, so that's why he took him out. Yes, but mm. it was an angel that by the time he came back from Abuja and was ill, because he went for some speaking engagements in Abuja, comes home and a few days later is gone. She said, Mommy, God loved that man too much to make him suffer. He put an angel in his body. The man that came back to this house those few days was not my daddy. She said, wow. Mommy, daddy was gone from Abuja. He was already gone. Mm. You know. That day she spoke to me. I was I was scared though because it was two of us in the room and she was so authoritative. Mm. She said, I'm not talking to you like your daughter. You know. So then my youngest, because you hear these experiences, these surreal experiences, but they the ones that we encountered. I've never, never heard it before in my life. My youngest daughter, I gave her my iPad because the children are not allowed to have phones with SIMs until they're at least eight, at least 13. Mm -hmm. At 13, you have your first SIM. So it's like a rite of passage. It's something that they look forward to, mm. to becoming 13, mm. have a phone for mm. the first time. Yes, they can have these children's tab to mm. play with, but mm. no SIM. So my youngest was using my iPad and I gave her because that period, just wanted anything that they can be happy doing and all of that. She came to me, she said, Mommy, <laughs> there's this app, Just Talk app for kids, that I discovered. Please download on your phone. And for me, I said, I already have WhatsApp. Why am I downloading Just Talk? Because I checked it, it was a video messaging app for children, but mm -hmm. she insisted. And the way she disturbed my life over it, I said, Okay, just so she would leave me alone, I downloaded it to my phone. And then she made my sibling download it. But I didn't know that I was going to receive the shock of my life from that app because we started talking. You know, she will do video calls with me, with my sibling. She was disturbing all of us. So we started laughing. We said, so this is why she wanted us to download this app mm. so that she will be disturbing mm. our lives, you mm. know. But one day I saw that there were some strange chats coming in that didn't sound like her. There's one that I saw, you're just like my best friend. I feel confident to talk to you. Hmm. When I saw that one, <laughs> I showed it to my sister. I said, why is she sounding so mature all of a sudden? And we laughed over it. Then she would send me these heart shapes. I will send back, I love you, my baby. Then I saw, love you more. When I saw love you more, that was the one that my heart beat. I mean, my heart skipped immediately because that's how my husband used to respond to me. If you tell the children I love you, they'll say, I love you, mommy, and all of that. But love you more, nobody says it to me. Mm. So when I saw it, I showed my sister, I said, Why is she sounding like her, her father? father. Mm. And my sister said to me that um, we need to check the spirit that is in this girl. And we started laughing mm. over it. But the next set of chat that came in, I wasn't laughing anymore. I just saw. Don't worry about me. I'm in the hands of God. On that and, app? On that app. And God is taking good care of me. Meanwhile, my daughter was with my iPad upstairs. I was downstairs. Don't worry about me. I'm in the hands of God. And God is taking good care of me. When I saw that, my first instinct was to fling my phone away and run.